it's Rose and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another video. We are officially in 2021. We are officially out of 2020. Can we just say a hallelujah? Yes, hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Okay, let's just be honest. We have all been waiting for this moment. I think. I mean, I would like a refund for 2020. We are moving on. We're moving on. We are now in 2021 and hopefully 2021 will be our year, guys. It will be our year. Amazing things, beautiful things will happen. Let's just put it out there to the universe, okay? Anyway, guys, in all seriousness, Happy New Year, everybody. Today, I want to show you guys some basics, some vegan basics. And the reason why I wanna do that is because it is January, and usually January is the time when a lot of people start their vegan journey. And a lot of people want to start eating more plant-based, Maybe they wanna go vegan fully. And uh, I wanna focus a lot of my content on providing some tips for beginners and just kinda of like laying out the, the groundwork, if you will. Now this video might still be helpful for you even if you are not new. Some of these I actually found out much later on in my vegan journey, so stick around in case you don't know. Okay, and guys, before we jump into the video, I do wanna let you know I have three eBooks that I sell on my website, and one of them is very much focused on going vegan and tips on going vegan. So there are tips on grocery shopping, how to save money, some beginner-friendly recipes, tips on dealing with social situations, just like all kinds of things, and that is my how to go vegan guide. So that is uh, for sale on my website, so I'll link that down below. Also, I have a bundle which includes that eBook, as well as my Cheap Lazy Vegan Recipes eBook, which is my first recipes eBook including lots of beginner-friendly, very easy, simple vegan recipes. So that bundle is also available as well, and you save a little bit of money if you get the bundle. Anyways, that will be linked down below if you guys are interested. If not, that's totally fine. I have tons of free resources here on my YouTube channel, as well as my website and my Instagram, so check those out. All right, let's jump right into the basics. Now, first off, I wanna show you guys a very easy, very simple cashew parmesan recipe. This is very minimal, and you make it once, and you can keep it in your pantry, in your fridge, for a very long time, okay? I just keep it for, I don't know, until I run out of it, okay? I don't think it actually goes bad. And you can just sprinkle it on top of anything and it is so delicious and it's so simple. Let's go. All right guys, super simple. All you have to do is take a food processor and add in three quarter cup of cashews, a quarter cup of nutritional yeast, three quarter teaspoon of salt, and this last ingredient is optional, but I like to add in half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And all you have to do is just grind it up until it becomes a nice fine consistency. And I haven't tried doing this with a blender. I've only done it with a food processor. So let me know guys if this works with a blender. I feel like food processors would work better. And this thing I have here, I've had it for so long. I'm gonna see if they still sell it. And if they do, I'll link it down below. Uh, but this one is like a food processor and a blender and it works really well. And all I do guys is just store this in a tightly sealed container and I leave it in the pantry and it's totally fine But I think maybe depending on where you live and the temperature if it's like really humid and hot Then you might want to leave it in the fridge. But yeah for me Pantry is fine. I live in Canada. So it's all good and of course, you can add this on top of whatever you want. I love this because it doesn't have that Parmesan stank and it still has a ton of flavor now the next thing I want to show you guys is my scrambled tofu seasoning. For those of you that don't know, scrambled tofu is basically our vegan version of scrambled eggs. And if you're vegan, you've probably ate this before, you've made this before. It is definitely something that you will probably be eating. Everyone has their different way of making scrambled tofu. I'm sure everyone has their own special method. But I decided a few years ago that making scrambled tofu is a hassle because you have to take out so many different types of spices. Like this is one thing where I like to add lots of different seasonings. And I decided one day that instead Instead of taking out 5 million spices, I'm just gonna do that one time and make a big jar of scrambled tofu seasoning so that anytime I make scrambled tofu in the morning, I can just take that one jar out and just add that seasoning into my scrambled tofu and that just makes everything 5 million times easier. Now I have a recipe video on this already, so I'm just gonna link that video down below so you guys can grab that recipe and I highly suggest making it because it just makes your life a million times easier and of course, you can customize it. You can add in other things if I miss something that you really like you can add that in as well if there's something you don't like take that out So it's a really great hack just in general if there's something else you like to make often But you don't like to take out all of the seasonings then make a little mixture of it and keep it in your pantry It makes your life five million times 
easier, I promise. All right, so the next thing I wanna show you guys is a chickpea salad. So this is one of the first things that I made when I first went vegan, and I still make it to this day once in a while. I think it's great. I think it's just such a great, easy way to get some protein into your meals and just make a very simple, easy meal. So chickpea salad can also be known as like vegan tuna salad. There's something about chickpeas that kind of tastes like tuna. I know that sounds crazy, but vegans, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. But of course, whether or not you think it tastes like tuna, I think chickpea salad tastes fantastic either way. It's super simple, you guys. And once again, you can customize things however way you want. But this is the simplest way that I make chickpea salad. So here we go. All right, I'm just gonna make one serving of the chickpea salad. So I'm using three quarter cup of chickpeas. I'm just using canned chickpeas that I've drained and I've rinsed. And now I'm just mashing it with a fork. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be like super duper mashed. I just like to mash it so that, you know, it's kind of mashed. <laughs> and if I was making this for more than one serving, I would probably use a food processor because it's just a lot easier. But since I was just making one serving, I'm just using a fork. And to season, we're keeping it very simple. I'm just gonna add in half a tablespoon of vegan mayo. You could also add in one tablespoon if you wish. And next, I'm adding in half a tablespoon of relish and half a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Next, I wanted mine to taste a little bit like tuna-y, so I'm using some kelp granules, which has a little bit of sodium in there. If you don't have kelp granules, totally fine. Just use a bit of salt. I would use maybe like a quarter teaspoon of salt. Start with that, and then you can also add in some pepper and some more salt if you need. Another tip, if you don't wanna use vegan mayo or if you can't find vegan mayo, totally fine. I would use some avocados. So quarter of an avocado, half an avocado, and just kind of mash that into the chickpeas and that's really awesome as well. And my friends, remember, this is simply a base. You can always add in other things as well. Other things I like to add in sometimes are onions that I've diced and also diced celery. Also, you can add in some other seasonings and spices. I'm just enjoying my chickpea salad on top of English muffins. And I'm also gonna top with some green onions. And there you go, super simple. And of course, you can eat this in a sandwich. You can eat this in a wrap. You can eat this on crackers. You can, I don't know, do whatever you want with it. Okay, it's your chickpea salad. All right, so the next recipe is basically a hack. It's from one of my old vegan hacks videos, which I'll link down below if you guys are interested because that one has other goodies in there as well. But it is my three ingredient burger patty recipe. Yes, three ingredients and you can make a veggie burger patty. Super easy. Not only is it very minimal ingredients, it's also very cheap ingredients and you can can freeze these, you can eat them throughout the week, you can do whatever you want with them. And you can also make bean balls with this exact recipe as well, just shape them like balls instead of burger patties, okay? All right, so here's how you make these. First of the three ingredients will be oat flour or oats. I'm using oats, and if you're using oats, you wanna use a little bit more than a cup of oats, grind it up in your food processor, and then you get kind of like an oat flour. If you're using oat flour, one cup of oat flour does the trick and then you wanna set that aside. And in the same food processor, we're gonna add in one can of beans, just a regular size can. I'm using black beans, but you can do this with other beans as well. And then you just wanna run that through the food processor and it becomes nice and mashed and you're gonna add it into that bowl as well. Next, you just need one cup of tomato pasta sauce and there are the three ingredients. And then you just wanna mix this well and that is your base. So feel free once again to add in other seasonings if you'd like, or you can just cook it like this and it works. So yeah, you can make these into burger patties. First, I just kind of measure out, I believe half a cup for each patty. And I'm just going to heat up a pan on medium high heat, add a bit of oil, and then just place the burgers on top and cook it. So I flattened mine out with a spatula and the mixture is a little bit sticky. So I would wet the spatula with a little bit of water first before flattening the burger patties. And then I cook it on one side for about three to four minutes, flip it over, cook it again until it's cooked nicely. And like I mentioned, you could also make these into bean balls. So all I did was take a baking sheet and a tablespoon, and I just wet the tablespoon with some water each time. And I just overfilled the tablespoon, and then I just scooped out the uh, you know mixture, and then I placed it on a baking sheet. And then all I did was bake them in the oven at 370 degrees Fahrenheit, first for 15 minutes, and then I just flipped them over and then baked them for another 10 minutes. 
And guys, I have a confession. So this batch right here, what I did was I actually did a little experiment and I added in oats, beans, and the pasta sauce all at once in the food processor, blended it, and then I made the batch that way. And it didn't turn out as nicely as when I mixed everything separately. So when I ground up the oats first and then set that aside, ground up the beans, set that aside, all that stuff. So yeah, I would recommend doing it the way that I showed you, even though it's slightly more work, <laughs> just a little bit, but the consistency is just so much better and it just turns out better. Speaking of three ingredient recipes, I have another one for you guys, and this one is a favorite of mine from a very long time ago. These are three ingredient pancakes. Yes, three ingredient pancakes. They're super simple, super easy, and once again, very affordable, very cheap, and I used to make these all the time. And of course, if you add maple syrup on top and some other toppings, it's gonna be a little more than three ingredients, but hey, who's counting? All right, friends, so this mixture is going to make about two servings, so feel free to divide it in half or feed somebody else too. Or you can have both servings yourself, no judgment. So we're gonna add into a blender one ripe banana, one and a half cups of oats, and the final ingredient is just one cup of non-dairy milk. And all you have to do is just blend this up and that becomes your pancake batter. Now, depending on how big your banana is, you might wanna add in a little bit more liquid, maybe. Uh, it might be a bit thick. My mixture was a bit thick, but um, I've never had this fail on me. Like I've always succeeded with this, you know, mixture. <laughs> so yay. And another great thing to know is I've actually tried this with just water instead of non-dairy milk because I was desperate. And that also works, my friends. So if you're desperate, just use some water. And of course we can cook up the pancakes and I feel like most of us know how to cook pancakes, maybe? Not sure. Uh, I just add a little bit of vegan butter or oil onto a nonstick pan and then I just pour in that batter, okay? And I cook it on one side on medium heat for like, I don't know, four or five minutes and then flip it over, cook it for another few minutes and there you have it. And then of course you can top with whatever toppings you want and that is how easy it is to make three ingredient pancakes and of course guys there's multiple other ways of making vegan pancakes this is just one of the easiest simplest ways one of the cheapest ways and um yeah i hope you appreciate it next guys we're gonna make a pasta dish now do not be afraid of pasta pasta is your best friend there are so many different ways you can make pasta today i want to show you guys a super simple pasta it's not even a recipe. This is going to be a very basic vegan pasta dish. It's gonna be four to five ingredients depending on what you wanna use. It follows my kind of criteria on what I believe is a balanced meal. So here you go. All right, I'm just taking a quarter cup of red split lentils. I'm using dry red split lentils and I'm just throwing it into a bowl with some hot water that I just boiled in a kettle. And those split lentils will soften up while we cook up the pasta. And once the pasta is mostly finished, you can drain the water out of the lentils. And I'm just gonna, you know, just cook it up a little bit more on a pan until the lentils are pretty much done cooking, adding a little bit of water at a time if needed. And once your lentils are pretty much done cooking, you can add in your pasta sauce. I'm using, I believe, about half a cup of pasta sauce, and then I was basically in the last little bit of my pasta sauce jar, so I just added a little bit of water, shook it up, and then I added some more in there. That's what I do a lot when I have, you know, just a little bit of pasta sauce left, so that's what I did. Um, so maybe you wanna add, I don't know, three quarter cup of pasta sauce, or however much you want, okay? Some people like their pasta really saucy, so if that's your thing, then add more pasta sauce. And of course, once your pasta is done cooking, you can throw that into the sauce, mix it well. And I'm also going to add in three quarter cup of some frozen mixed vegetables. Yes, we are going full on lazy today. I used to do this very often when I was very lazy, which I mean, I still do this. So I guess I'm still lazy, but anyway. So we tossed that, allowed the sauce to kind of, you know, make love with the pasta. And then at the end here, I'm just gonna top with some nutritional yeast. The nutritional yeast part is very much optional, but I like to add it for some extra flavors. And there is your super simple pasta. I know, so easy. And my friends, if you don't wanna use red split lentils, you don't have to. 
I just use red split lentils because they cook much faster than green lentils or brown lentils, but you can always use canned lentils and just throw them into your pasta, which makes your life a million times easier as well. And sometimes I also add in just canned chickpeas or any other types of beans. So yeah, it's super easy, guys. And of course, feel free to top with some of that cashew parmesan that we made earlier. And I also added some extra nutritional yeast as well. <laughs> Next, we're gonna make some sushi. Sushi is actually really easy. I think a lot of people kind of get overwhelmed or a little bit intimidated by the idea of sushi, but all you really need is some sushi rice, some nori sheets, and whatever you wanna put inside. And if you guys are still afraid of making your own sushi and rolling the sushi roll, then you can actually make a sushi bowl and just simply put everything into a bowl and calling it a day, and it's that easy. All right, so into a bowl, we're gonna add in one cup of short grain brown rice. You can use regular sushi rice or short grain white rice. Just make sure it's short grain or sushi rice. The reason why we need to use short grain or sushi rice is because other types of rice won't stick. So unless you're planning on making a sushi bowl, which is totally fine, uh, you have to use short grain or sushi rice. So into the rice, I just add in a small pinch of sugar and a small pinch of salt, and I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of rice vinegar. And then I'm just gonna mix this well. And then you just wanna let the rice cool a little bit in room temperature. Sometimes I get lazy and I put it in the fridge, although apparently you're not supposed to do that, but I still do that sometimes. But anyway, <laughs> I just let it cool and then I prepare the other ingredients. And once you've prepared whatever you wanna add into your sushi, I'm just going to place that rice onto a nori sheet. And when I'm making sushi, I like to always have a nice bowl of water beside me because I like to wet my fingers with my hands. Otherwise, the rice will stick. Did I say wet my fingers with my hands? <laughs> wet my fingers with water. Otherwise, the rice will stick to your fingers and it'll make it really hard for you to work with it. So keep a bowl of water beside you and just continuously wet your hands with some water. And then I'm just gonna spread that rice as evenly as I possibly can onto the nori sheet, leaving some room at the top. And guys, you can of course feel free to add in whatever you want inside your sushi. This is your sushi, my friends. So I am just adding in whatever I have left in my fridge. That's usually how I do the sushi, okay? So I'm adding in some carrots, some green bell pepper, some seaweed salad, which is delicious by the way, and some avocado. And normally I like to add in some sort of like a tofu. I might like pan fry some tofu with some like soy sauce and stuff, or I might add in some smoked tofu if you can find it right now, but I didn't have anything like that. So usually what I would do with this kind of situation is probably have a side of edamame beans with my sushi so that I'm getting in some of that plant-based protein. And guys, once you are ready to roll your sushi, all you have to do is just take the bottom and just fold over all the contents, okay? And just kind of fold it, kind of like you're folding a burrito, okay? And then you just wanna wet that nori portion, the empty nori portion with a bit of water and then just seal the deal, my friends. And then I like to let it sit there for a little bit just to make sure it is sealed. And when you're ready to cut your sushi, you take a, hopefully a sharp knife. And then once again, I like to wet the knife with a little bit of water. And then you just wanna slice it up. And guys, if it breaks, if it's ugly, that's fine, okay, it happens, okay? It took me a long time to be able to make somewhat reasonably attractive looking sushi. So don't worry, it takes time. And if it's ugly, then just throw it into a bowl and call it a sushi bowl. And there you go, guys. There is the sushi. It's really easy. It's really simple. It's a lot easier than you might think. So try it out. And once again, if you are still uncomfortable, again, make it into a sushi bowl. Just throw the mixture into a bowl. Make it look nice and pretty. Just drizzle some soy sauce on top. Sushi bowls are awesome as well. So yeah, feel free to play around with it. Have a lot of fun with it. And hopefully you guys enjoy it. And last but not least, Buddha bowls. This is kind of like an overarching thing. It's not something, you know, specific it has to follow this specific recipe. There are a million and one ways to make Buddha bowls. And actually, uh, I have a free sauces guide which I recently released on my website. So if you guys want to check out my website, go there. There should be a pop-up that says like free sauces guide. So just put your email in and then we will send you the sauces guide. It's basically like a mini uh, ebook with different types of vegan like basic sauces. I think it actually has my scrambled tofu seasoning uh, recipe in there as well, as well as like how to use those seasonings and sauces. And my sauces 
sauces guide includes my tahini sauce, my tahini dressing, which I use for like all my Buddha bowls because that dressing is so good. I'm like obsessed, it is delicious. It goes so well in a Buddha bowl. So once again, if you go on my website, just sign up for the free sauces guide and you'll get it sent to your inbox. A Buddha bowl is a vegetarian meal served on a single bowl or high rimmed plate, which consists of small portions of several foods served cold. Okay, I don't know about that part. I don't know about if it's served cold, okay? These may include whole grains such as quinoa or brown rice, plant proteins such as chickpeas or tofu, and vegetables. So yeah, that's probably how I would define a Buddha bowl as well, except for the cold part. I don't think that the Buddha bowl has to be necessarily cold. Um, I actually eat mine warm usually. So usually mine would consist of like brown rice and then maybe like tofu, tempeh, beans. I just kind of pick and choose whichever protein I want to add and then lots of veggies and sometimes some like healthy fats like my tahini dressing for example or avocados or pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds whatever. It's just so nutritious and good and these are like really satisfying and they hit like all the kind of things that I would look for in a meal. We've got the carbs from, you know, the whole grain, protein, vegetables, we have healthy fats and it's just a balanced meal for me and I think it just works out beautifully. And it's something you could also meal prep in advance. You can make the different kind of fixins in advance and you can just make yourself little Buddha bowls throughout the week, which makes your life a million times easier. So Buddha bowls just in general, I'm sure there's like a million recipes for Buddha bowls online as well. So check those out as well, but also check out my tahini dressing recipe because it's so good. Once again, that free sauces guide is available on my website. All right, you guys, so that's it for my vegan basics video. I really hope you guys found these helpful. Let me know if you found any of these helpful and if you've made any of these at all. If you guys have any requests or ideas on more content for beginner vegans, then let me know down below as well. And if you enjoyed this video, guys, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!